In this self-defense training class, I want to show you how I use a walking stick for self-defense so that you can see how you would use a walking stick for self-defense. It's pretty simple. I like to stick with the basics. I like to do only what works. No fancy moves allowed. It's got to work. It's got to keep you safe. So let's talk about this is my walking stick that I use most of the time. This is one of my favorite ones. It's so pretty, uh, extremely durable. I call it Doug because it came from a guy named Doug. It was a gift. I've named this Doug. We call this Joe. Joe the martial arts staff, right? Joe is a little bit smaller in diameter. Gotta get this off the screen. Sorry about that. But it's a basic self-defense staff. It's a medium size, it's about 54 inches. This is designed specifically for self-defense. Hello, D. It's good to see you. D's in New Zealand. But I practice, I train with the Joe. That's something that you can do. You can train with a martial arts staff and then use this, walk around during your daily routine, go for a hike, go for a walk, carrying a Joe martial arts staff. And it just looks like a stick. If somebody doesn't know, they don't know it's a martial arts stick. It just looks like a self-defense, or they don't know it's a self-defense stick. They just look, think it's a walking stick. Or you can carry something like Doug here. This is specifically for self-defense. This comes from the Irish fighting, Irish stick fighting. This is made in Shillelagh. There's a town called Shillelagh in the mountains, mountainside of um, Ireland in County Wicklow. And I know that because my father-in-law is from Wicklow and he's there right now. And he visited the shop or he talked about visiting the shop. And that's where these are made. But these are very effective. Hello, Matthew, it's good to see you. Who else do we have? Andre, Andre's in France. Andre, welcome, thank you for being here. Now, I wanna show you, keep it simple. The most simple techniques are gonna be the most effective and I want you to think about what works only. Don't think about fancy moves. The first one is going to be a simple thrust. So if you're walking with your walking stick, this is how I use my walking stick for self-defense. Just simply push, almost like a jab. It's that shortest distance. Robin's in Portugal. Hello, Nate. Nate's in Los Angeles. And Al Bailey said, is it legal to carry? Yes, and I'll tell you why. Uh, now, it might not be legal to take it on a plane, although I will tell you, when we went to Costa Rica a month ago, there was a gentleman on the, waiting to get on the plane. He already made it through TSA. He had something that looked very similar to this. It was made out of a different wood, a, a wood from Africa. And I stopped him and I said to him, I said, well, how did you get that through TSA? He said, well, I'm an older gentleman, which he was. He said, and the fact is, I train with my walking stick for self-defense. I said, that's fantastic. I talk about it all the time. He says, I know, I've seen you, which was really fun. It was fun, I was there with my son and he got to see, we were to have this interaction. But he said that he got it through TSA. He simply told him it was his walking stick, that if he didn't use it, he was gonna limp all over the place. They didn't even question him. So most of the time, you can carry a cane. In the past, I always thought they would take your walking stick but he got his through, he says he flies all over the world, no one ever takes it from him. So yes, in most places you can carry it, this Irish shillelagh using, it has this big knob on the end, it's the same technique with the Joe martial arts stick, you can simply push and thrust, but you have to think about principles of self-defense. Number one, Paul, thank you, Paul says love your videos. Paul, thanks for being here. Number one, think about what the material is. This is wood, these are both wood. This is an extremely hard wood. Most shillelaghs traditionally would have some lead in the, the, the knot right here. Now this one is very heavy, I'm sure that it does. I don't even know how they get it in there, but it's a burled piece of wood. This is almost like a hammer or a fist coming straight into the nose or into the throat or into the sternum, into the solar plexus, into the groin for self-defense. Not to hurt somebody, not because you're a bully, but for self-defense, you have the right to defend yourself and you can at every single age. You shouldn't have to feel like you have to become a victim as you get older. So from here, you can thrust with this. This is very effective. It's made out of hickory. The second technique I want you to see that this is how I use my walking stick for self-defense. It's how you can too, is turning. It's almost like a punch and you push your thumb side down, pinky side comes up and that twisting motion puts the long side of your walking stick, whether you're using the Joe martial arts staff or a traditional walking stick, it brings it up and across the side of the head. Now, it's very effective. I don't care what kind of walking stick you're gonna use, it's fast, it's effective, and it's simple. And I wanna keep it simple because you have to be able to use it. If I give you a very complex, multifaceted, multi-step series of moves, it's not gonna work for you or for me or for anybody else. 
Andre says, what about a golf club? Of course. I do know some people who carry a golf club for self-defense when they go for a walk in the morning with their dog because there are other dogs that, are, that have attacked them before and they carry that. Now, I don't know what the legal ramifications are if they had to use that, and I'm not a lawyer, legal disclaimer, you're on your own when it comes to that, use your common sense first, but I do believe you have the right to defend yourself in most situations. This is a better option. It's much more attractive too, and it looks like a walking stick because it is a walking stick. This is a martial arts Joe staff. There's a link below where you can see exactly how this is made, how inexpensive they are, and how extremely durable and strong it is. You can even make your own with a dowel rod from the uh, hardware store, the do-it-yourself shop, but it also looks just like a walking stick. In fact, if so you were walking down the street, no one would say, why is that Garrett guy carrying a martial arts staff? Now, if you had the big long staff, the bow, the Japanese uh, long staff, they might say, that guy's walking around, he thinks he's Gandalf the Great or something. Why does he have that? That would be a little bit more weird, but this, it's like the gray man option. It would make complete sense to somebody that you might just be out for a nice long walk. Maybe your knee hips, hip hurts, your knee hurts, your foot hurts. You're just carrying something for mobility, right? To help you get along down the street. Your first technique, a thrust, your second technique, and turn. I'm gonna have to put one down to show you my third technique, which is my favorite. This is how I use the walking stick for self-defense. Yeah, um, it is, that's a root ball. Paul says, I think the knob is a root ball. It's exactly what that is. This, and again, it's just, it's a heavy hammer. This one, again, we're gonna call this one Doug. It's a very, it was a nice gift from a gentleman named Doug. That's why I called him Doug. And I call this guy Joe, because it's a Joe martial arts staff. That helps me keep, keep them separated, keep it clear in the head, right? But in this position, if you need to create distance quickly in a very simple, effective way, this is how I use my walking stick for self-defense. I simply pick this up to the side of my head. Now, I'm a big fan of putting the helmet on when it comes to self-defense. That means if I didn't have any weapon in my hand or any self-defense tool, I can drive my elbow, this is his face, drive my elbow or into his throat, into his solar plexus and create distance. I'm a big fan of being first mover, moving. If I know that there's a threat, I don't have any choice but to defend myself physically, I'd like to be the first one to get there and stop him before he stops me, right? Close with and destroy. You put your helmet on, your hand comes here, so you can absorb the blows better. You can protect your head, you can protect the vital spots on your body. This is how I use my self-defense stick. I also like to bring this up for the same reason. That puts it also in your front hand. So from here to here, now you can thrust with a simple move. It only works if it's fast, simple, if it's a direct line. It's if you have to do all kinds of complicated, fancy moving steps. This is all fun and cool and neat to train with, but I like simple when it comes to self-defense. I love both. I love doing the fancy uh, martial arts style moves and the, the cool things that you learn from different styles, but I like most effective self-defense moves that are gonna work. If you like self-defense, if you like martial arts, if you like both of them, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Put this, that just helps me grow the channel. That helps us all come together and helps this community of uh, like-minded people grow. So please help us out, help us grow this channel. Bring this here, thrust here. Now from here, I will pull here and bring it down over top. This is how I use my walking stick for self-defense. Thank you, Gray. Uh, Nate, Nate says, you got it. Thank you for uh, subscribing. Yeah, and Andre says, simple is better. So from here, simple thrust, put your helmet on, protect your head, guard that whole side of your body, then your hand slides down, the other hand comes down on top, and using that giant knuckle, that giant hammer right there, anywhere along the top of his head for self-defense is gonna be very effective. So immediate, direct, and explosive. Immediate means like right now, don't hesitate, be the first mover. Direct, that's that distance. The shortest distance between the two points is that straight line. From here to here, that's a straight line. From here to here, that's the straight line, that's the straight line. Even this is a straight line because your hand is going forward and turning. It just happens to bring that up alongside the side of his head for self-defense, it's very effective. So here, you know, it's three basic techniques. You can do it in either hand. 
In fact, it would be a good idea if you practiced with one hand and practiced with the other hand. That's how I use my walking stick for self-defense. Practice with the left, all three techniques, put the helmet on, thrust, slide it down, and strike. Now, you could also be carrying your walking stick and your hand like this, so it's kind of even in this position. Turn your hand up, and now you have an immediate response to a threat. So from here, turn your hand up, and turn your hand over, same thing. It doesn't matter if your hands are split in this grip, there's a strike, or if you turn it here like a push-up, there's a strike, or there's a strike. In fact, you can easily strike this way, both sides of the head for self-defense, and if your hand is a split grip, the same technique works. It doesn't have to be here, this is also effective. In fact, this is probably gonna be easier on your wrists, but this is also going to work and it's not gonna be that much worse on your wrists. From here, you can also just thrust using this straight hard piece of wood. And this is, um, somebody, somebody help me out. Tell me what, what, what do they make the Irish shillelagh out of? What's Doug made out of here? Yeah, Matto Pasquinelli Lugo says, Lugo, what do they make? Uh, Lugo's in Ireland, I think. What do they make the, uh, what wood is the, the Irish shillelagh made of? I'll tell you what this is, this is hickory. And this is extremely strong. I don't remember what this is. Blackthorn, thank you. The blackthorn, this is, and you can see how nicely finished that is. This is exceptionally strong. In fact, I think if I were to hold this up and I were to smash it, and I never would because I'm in love with both of these two guys, right? <laughs> Doug and Joe, but it would smash it right in the middle. Um, yeah, so, oh, right. So Chinto Kata says, look at the Cunningham system. I've seen that, I've seen a lot of those different systems or a lot of the different Irish fighting systems, and they have so many super cool moves, a lot of moves where you're going down and then you're into your self-defense techniques, and there's a lot of great value that comes from every style of self-defense using a stick, whether it's a martial arts style, like an Asian martial arts style, like the Japanese, Korean, Chinese stuff, or if it's from, um, thank you, Lugo. Lugo's given us the history of the Blackthorn, or, uh, if it, you know, if it's from Irish stick fighting or they have stick fighting in the islands in the Bahamas, there are different, uh, or the, and, and in Senegal, there are different cultures where they use sticks to get after each other for fun, I guess, and for self-defense. I like it for self-defense when it's simple, effective, and it's something that you can pick up the first time you pick up a stick, learn some basic moves, and then immediately feel like you can now walk out of your house, go for a walk, take the dog for a walk, go uh, do your daily chores, and not feel so threatened by what might be out there. Because the world seems like it's a scarier place at times, and I know a lot of that is, is uh, the media just trying to get us all riled up. A lot of it's real. And so whether it's real or whether it's imagined, having an option for self-defense, and this is the great non-permissive environment tool, right? There's one of these tools that some people will often come on this channel and say, why would I carry that? I just have one of these. And I often say, that's great, congratulations, but you can't do this in every single situation. The guy starts to become threatening and you, you're going to jail, right? You can't, you can't do that in every single situation. It's not appropriate. And even if it is appropriate, if it doesn't work, if the things don't come out of it right, if you don't know how to use it because you've only you, you got the concealed carry and it took you one shot and you don't really have training on it or somebody takes it away from you, there are many reasons why knowing how to defend yourself with both open hands and self-defense tools like this are a great option. And it just might be your style. I have the permit to do the concealed. I've got multiple um, self-defense tools. I spent uh, time in the Marine Corps and in the Army and in a lot of um, competitive shooting types of situations. I've done a lot of training on um, uh, weapon retention using that tool. I've done a lot of shoot or, uh, uh, training on accuracy drills and speed drills, and I love to shoot steel. There are a lot of ways that I could be very effective if that's what I chose to do for self-defense, but it doesn't feel appropriate for me in most places. And in most situations, if you go into like a bank or the school or the church, I'm not carrying those things in there. I'm in what I call a non-permissive environment. Other people call it non-permissive environment. You might be in a non-permissive environment where you've gone through TSA and you have your walking cane for self-defense or you have a walking stick for self-defense or you've trained with 
this tool for self-defense, a stick for self-defense, and there's sticks everywhere. There's, um, there's an umbrella. Maybe use an umbrella to uh, be your self-defense tool. Maybe you did carry your golf clubs onto the plane. You know, I don't think you can. If in first class, I've seen them put them in the first class, so I know some people can get them through, right? But just having the ability to know how to do some simple things with a self-defense tool that is not one of these, but is one of these with a simple thrust, put your helmet on, strike this way, twist this way, get it in two hands, pushing to the side, take out a knee, right? Go for the middle, simple things. Immediate, effective, and explosive. Immediate, direct, and explosive. That's what you need. Yeah, uh, so Nate says use curtain rod. You can use a curtain rod. There's so many t tools. When you start to learn how to defend yourself using a Joe Martial Arts staff, and again, if you wanna see what the dimensions are, it's that first link below or an Irish shillelagh, you train with this, and then when this isn't with you, you look around, and often there are other things that you can use. They might not be the exact same length, maybe not the same material, not the same heaviness, or the same uh, diameter or thickness, but you know how to defend yourself using. You might even create your own. Like I've shown you many times how to roll up a magazine to use a short stick for self-defense or how to take a long newspaper, flip it over, put a shaker of salt in the middle, roll that up, and now you have a club for self-defense, like a, a short, like a war club or a mace, something like that. Hello from, uh, Wilson's in Vancouver, Canada. Hello, Wilson. We've got Canada here, um, Britain, Los Angeles. Where else do we have? Uh, Ireland and uh, France. So worldwide, this is our global virtual dojo. That's what I love about this so much is that all of us come together. And when you share the comments with me, when you ask me questions or you, you add things to it. Yeah, Lugo says lead shot is a loaded stick. There's lead shot in here, I know for a fact. In fact, if we go and get one of the other shillelaghs because I have multiple, Doug sent me several. Thank you, Doug. This one I call Doug because it just reminds me of a tough older gentleman and that's how I picture Doug, tough older gentleman then this is the self-defense stick with the lead in the tip. This one, uh, Daryl's in Northern California. Welcome, Daryl, thank you for being here. Northern California is so beautiful, Big Sur. Um, right there, it's one of the, my favorite places that we visited. Um, oh yeah, Peter's in Germany, welcome Peter in Germany. And uh, Andre says, uh, international seafood, thank you very much. Andre, I think you said you're in, in France. So you pick it up, you thrust, you bring it down here. There's so many basic things that you're gonna do with your walking stick for self-defense. And I just wanted to show how I use my walking stick for self-defense so you would know how to use your walking stick for self-defense. And as you can tell, everybody who's on here, hello Jim, Jim's in New York City. You guys, are, you, you guys know as much as I do. Some of you know a lot more than I do. And when you add to the conversation, not just here in chat, but also put it in the comment section below, please put a comment in the comment section below so that we can get the conversation going. Then, yeah, Matthew's in Newtown, New Jersey. Beautiful Newtown, New Jersey. Um, then we all learn from each other. So please put the comments in the comment section below and comment on each other's comments so that we can learn from each other and you kind of make these connections. It's kind of fun. It's like a virtual pin pal, right? You don't have to get the hand cramp. You just put in a couple of comments on your computer or on your phone, and then you have an international friend. Yeah, Lugo says he loves Deutschland. Ich liebe Deutschland. So um, those are the basic techniques. That's how I use my walking stick for self-defense. Let me know how you use your walking stick for self-defense, and I will see you guys in a little bit. Thank you.